All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So this morning, we're going to be in chapter 16 of Genesis. Chapter 16 of Genesis. We're going to be looking at Hagar and Ishmael. We're going to go into the discussion of who they are. Go into the discussion of what came from them. Why things were done the way they were done. And go into a bit of a discussion on all of that. So, chapter 16 of Genesis is where we're going to be at. If you want to open up there, first we'll get some music and then we will jump into it. Standing in the gap to bring God's word. We 
truly appreciate you being with us today. And if there is anything that we can pray for, we ask that you just reach out to us. Reach out to us through text, through email, through messaging, and any way that you can get a hold of us. Let us know how we can be the nice standing in the gap for you. And we truly appreciate each and every one of you. And now, here is today's message. So, we had a little technical difficulty this morning, but we're on track now, so we're going to pray in and get into this message. If you'll bow your heads with me, please. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we want to thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you continuously provide for us, Lord. We thank you for our protection against some of the different attacks that are coming our way. And Lord, we just ask that you bless this message, that this be your words, your will, and what you want to come across. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right. So chapter 16. So if you haven't been following along, <clears throat> this would be a point to go back and, and, and look at some of, at least go back and look at some of the things regarding Abram. Look at chapter 14 and 15. Look at some of the different things that are that are building up to this. Because in in previous chapters, we've we've gone over the fact that God has promised. Abram that he would be the father of many nations. We've we've seen this promise given to Abram about how he would be the father of many nations and and we know that that's part of God's timing, not our timing and and there's a lot of of things going on with that. So as we begin chapter 16, if you have not been following along, please go back and and read and watch the sermons over over Abram's life. So, beginning here in chapter 16, verse 1, it says, Abram's wife Sarah had not borne any children for him. So, Abram's been promised that he would be the father of many nations, that he would have so many sons, so many kids, and so many offspring that, that if you look up at the night sky with all the stars and try to count them, you wouldn't be able to count them. That's how many children, how many offspring he would have. And Sarah, Sarai at this point, Sarai has not had any children. She had not borne him any children. It says, but she owned an Egyptian slave named Hagar. Sarai said to Abram, since the Lord has prevented me from bearing children, go to my slave. Perhaps through her I can build a family. And Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So Abram's wife, Sarai, took Hagar, the Egyptian slave, and gave her to her husband, Abram, as a wife for him. This happened after Abram lived in the land of Canaan ten years. He slept with Hagar, and she became pregnant. I'm going to stop there for a second. So... Not only had God told Abram about this, God had also told Sarai that that, that Abram would be the father of many nations. Sarai was in on this too. But instead of waiting for God and waiting for what God had promised to come to fruition, they decided that they were going to take matters into their own hands and try to create for themselves what they thought God owed them. God said that you were going to be the father of many nations. I haven't warned you any children at this point. We're getting older, and so we've got to make it happen. And, and, and we're, going to, we're going to make steps and do things in order to make this happen. Now, it was not uncommon at that in those days. It was not uncommon for... A man to have multiple wives. It, it, that was a common thing. What happened here, and we see why it's important not to do those sorts of things, is we see the reasons why marriage is specifically and instituted from the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Marriage is one man and one woman, and you keep the marriage bed pure. So anyway, Sarai goes and gets Hagar, 
and gives her to Abram, and Abram sleeps with her, and she becomes pregnant. Now you have an Egyptian slave in Abram's house that is pregnant with the only offspring, the only heir to everything that Abram has. So this slave now is knows that in her belly is the heir. You think she's going, going to continue to be treated as a slave at that point? In my belly is your heir. So it says, when she realized that she was pregnant, talking about Hagar, the slave, when she realized she was pregnant, she treated her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. You're not going to tell me what to do. You couldn't bear him any children. I did. You can't tell me what to do anymore. My son will rule. Verse 5 says, Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for my suffering. Really? Really, Sarai? It was your idea. You're the one that went to Abram to begin with and said, Hey, since I can't bear children, here's my slave. Go sleep with her. Anywho, she says, you are responsible for my suffering. I put my slave in your arms. Well, she admits it there. And ever since she saw, she saw that she was pregnant, she has treated me with contempt. May the, Lord, ju, may the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord judge between me and you. That's actually pretty strong words. That's actually pretty strong words. May the Lord judge between me and you. Because I can't even look at you right now. Kind of that sort of, of, of contempt in her tone and what she's saying there. May the Lord judge between me and you to see who's actually wrong here. And may the, may the Lord judge you and judge me uh, based on what, what happened here. Pretty strong words that she's throwing out and pretty, pretty strong accusations that Sarai is throwing out at Abram. Abram did what Sarai wanted to do. Granted, Abram could have said no as well. So I'm not throwing all of this on Sarai here, but it was Sarai's idea because she felt like she couldn't do something. So she decided to take matters into her own hands when God had already told them what was going to transpire, she decided to take it into her own hands because she felt like she couldn't do something. Abram replied, verse 6, Abram replied to Sarai, Here, your slave is in your hands. Do whatever you want with her. Abram's like, look, I didn't want this to begin with. This, is, this wasn't what I wanted. So your slave, it's your slave. You do what you want to her. I'm out. I'm out of this. This ain't, this ain't, mm -mm. I don't want to be caught up in all this drama and all this. Uh, y'all go catfight how y'all want to catfight. Leave me out of it. Then Sarai mistreated her so much that she ran away from her. Sarai then decided to mistreat Hagar to the point that Hagar ran away. There's a lot going on here and a lot of a lot of things that honestly people get mixed up in nowadays a lot too. This is why you keep the marriage bed pure. This is why you don't invite other people into your bedroom. This is why you don't do things like that because it always ends up in situations just like that. But it's it, so that is 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 on the 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 physical fleshly temptation of of sexual immoralities and and things like that. It also goes into you know a lot of times I talk about you, you do have to do things and you do have to get up off your butt in order to do things and things like that. However, if you are trying to force if you're trying to force things and not trusting God that God's going to do it, 
and God is going to provide what he told you he was going to provide, and you try to force things, it creates issues as well. And that is a very fine line between how much do you do, how much do you go and try to do things, and how much do you trust that God's going to provide those things. We have to utterly and completely trust God that God's going to guide us. But again, if you are if you don't have a job and you're just sitting there playing video games all day and not putting in any applications, are you going to get a job? Probably not. But that doesn't mean that you do immoral things in order to get it, in order to force that. You don't go and try to get somebody else fired in order to get that job. You don't go start rumors about people. You don't go start doing immoral things to get that job. And that's actually what they did here was they tried to do immoral things that they knew wasn't quite right in order to force a blessing. And we'll see how that blessing backfired. And it's still to this day. So, verse, so, so Hagar runs away. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord found her, Hagar, by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. <clears throat> he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She replied, I am running away from my mistress Sarai. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, <clears throat> you must go back to your mistress and submit to her mistreatment. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will greatly multiply your offspring and they will be too many to count. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, you have conceived and will have a son. You will name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your cry of affliction. This man will be like a wild donkey. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. He will live at odds with all his brothers. So, Hagar goes and she runs away. And she's out by a river and she's crying out to the Lord. And there's an answer. And it says the angel of the Lord. And whenever the Old Testament says the angel of the Lord, that's talking about Jesus. He goes and he talks to her. And he tells her that she will have a lot of offspring. That, that she's going to, that she's conceived and she's going to have a son. And that, that son is going to have, you know offspring of his own and, and this and that and the other but there's an important part here he says your son is going to be like a wild donkey he says his hand is going to be against everyone and everyone's hand is going to be against him he's going to live at odds with all his brothers they're never going to see eye to eye they're never going to get get along so I mentioned that this feud back and forth was going on to this day. This child's name is Ishmael. Have you ever heard of Ishmaelites? Ishmaelites were the first Muslims. Muslims traced their beginnings back to Ishmael. They trace their beginnings back to Ishmael. And while I don't know everything about Islam or everything about the Muslim religion, I don't know everything about it. I, I only know a little, little bit here and there. It makes sense. It makes sense because their Quran reads in a way that it is feel sorry for, infiltrate, and then attack. And if you trace it back to the beginnings with being Ishmael, and then in the 7th century, you had Muhammad, 
Well, if you trace all that back, the, the, the pity party, the feel sorry for, the mistreated, we were mistreated, we're going to be at odds with everyone and not see eye to eye with Christianity, not see eye to eye with anyone that is Christian or Jew. At odds with all your brothers. At odds with Christianity, Judaism. Because you feel that the Muslims feel like they were mistreated to begin with, that they never got a fair shake, da 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 da, da and all and go on and on. So why then, if Ishmael was technically Abram's heir, technically Ishmael would be Abram's heir. Abram, that's his seed. That's his, that's his child, right? Why would Ishmael not be accepted by God? Why? Would Ishmael not be accepted by God? Because God had already promised Abram and Sarai that they together would have the heir, the heir. That they together would have the heir. And in, in chapter 17, we're going to, going to get into some of that as well. They're, that they together will have an heir and name him Isaac. This was not the promised heir and the promised offspring that God had promised to Abram and Sarai. This child, Ishmael, while Jesus himself, the angel of the Lord, Jesus came and talked to Hagar and said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. Your child is going to be taken care of. I hear your cries of affliction. I understand the pain that you're going to get, you're going through. I understand, and I'm going to be there to help you. Ishmael was not the heir that was promised. But you also really have to look at, even though he wasn't the one that was promised, the angel of the Lord, which when the Old Testament again talks, says the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus, came and spoke to Hagar and promised that they would be okay. He did tell her to go back to Sarai. He did tell her to go back to Sarai. You have to go back, put up with her mistreatings a little bit. Things are going to get better. Things are going to get, eh, it, maybe, <laughs> we'll see as things progress. Um, <clears throat> but he's like, you do have to go back for now. For right now, you do have to go back. You need to be there for a little bit longer. And sometimes we have to go back and we have to stay in a situation until things come to fruition. Sometimes we have to suffer a little bit. Sometimes we have to go through a little bit so that we learn a little bit more, so that we grow a little bit more, so that whenever the time is right, things are in place for us to go where we need to go and do what we need to do. So, continuing out in, in, verse, in uh, chap at chapter 16, we're in verse 13 here. So she called to the Lord who spoke to her, the God who sees. For she said, in this place I have actually seen the one who sees me. That is why she named the spring a well of the living one who sees me. It is located between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave birth to Abram's son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son Hagar had. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to him. She has the child. She has Ishmael. She has him. Abram is now 86 years old. At that point, Abram is 86 years old, and this is his first heir. This is his first child at 86. They probably th honestly think that they're not going to have anything anymore. They're eight, he, Abram's 86 years old. I mean, 86-year-olds you know out there that can still produce a child without the help of special pills. I'm just saying. He's 86 years old. 
He's got to think, this is it. I ain't having any more kids. But that's not the child that was promised. His timing, his timing, his plan, not our timing, not our plan. And that sometimes is extremely difficult. Because we don't know his timing. He doesn't always tell us his timing. Very rarely does he tell us his timing. That on this day, on Tuesday, October 1st, you're going... Yeah, he doesn't really tell us those things. Whenever it's just ready and whenever you're ready, then maybe. But I'm ready now. No, you're not. But I'm ready. No, you're not. See, and it's funny because when you break it down and you start looking at, at different theological points and, and looking at that, God is the beginning and the end and everywhere in between. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, everything in between. Time is, is pretty, time in and of itself, the way that we view time, is pretty irrelevant to God. So to him, it's not a matter of, in two months or it on on this particular day it's whenever you're good whenever you finally figure it out and you're ready for it that's when that's the time not a at 2 p.m it's when you figure things out and are ready that's when <laughs> it'd be like telling your kid you know instead of when you finish finish cleaning your room then you can have this prize. You can have this reward. That's how we would normally do it with our kids, right? After you finish your your dinner, you can have dessert. After you finish cleaning your room, we can go do this or this fun thing. It's not at 7:05 p.m. you can have dessert. Well, if at 7:06 they haven't still they still haven't finished their dinner, and you're already got dessert sitting there, you got ice cream sitting there. They're not ready for dessert yet. If they're not done done finished cleaning their room, and you tell them, you know, at 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 twelve twelve ten, we're leaving to go do go do this fun thing with you, and they're not done cleaning their room, and you take them to do that fun thing, their room's still a mess. They haven't done what they needed to do in order to get those things. God's our Father. He wants us to get things done. He wants us to be ready for the blessings that he's giving us. That way our ice cream doesn't melt while we're still eating our dinner. With that, I'm going to close this one out. If you will bow your heads with me, please. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we just, we just thank you for everything that you continuously bless us with and provide for us. And, Lord, we just ask that you continue watching over us, continue guiding us. Lord, guide each and every step as we continue to try our best to walk with you. Guide each, guide our feet to walk with you. And Lord, we just ask that you give us a blessed day, that you're with us, and that you guide us throughout the rest of this day. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. With that, I will see you guys back. Wednesday night Bible study, Wednesday at 7, Friday night lights, Friday at 8, Sunday morning service, Sundays at 11. Until then, I love you guys, and I will see you later.